How you all doing out there? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm honored and I'm blown away, even though this is my 25th year plus doing this. I've been doing this for a quarter of a century now, which is quite amazing for me in the process. Thank you. And I've had the privilege now of working with more than 3 million people live in events from more than 80 countries around the world. So at this stage, I've got to tell you something. I could be an idiot and I would know that there are certain patterns that cause people to be fulfilled, to be happy, to fit, to be strong, to feel alive to be vibrant, to have passion in their life, to do well financially, but even more importantly, emotionally, psychologically, spiritually, in their health and their relationships. And there are also patterns that make people frustrated, overwhelmed, depressed, sad, lonely, cause them to be struggling financially, struggling with their bodies, struggling intimately. And those patterns, they're not because there's something wrong with somebody, it's because of a pattern that we're doing. And I've spent a quarter of a century of my life basically studying the most successful people in the world and the most challenged and figuring out what's the fastest way to create a change in basically developing the one thing that all people have in common who succeed, their leaders. This is a leadership program. Because I don't care what, what style you are, I don't care if you're a mom, if you're a great mom, you lead your child, you're not led by your child or a great dad. If you're a great business person, you're a great salesperson, you're a great negotiator, you're a great anything, you're a great human being. Things. This has been my entire life's obsession. What makes the difference in people's lives? And that leadership component, as I say, doesn't always mean somebody follows you. A leader is somebody who lives life on their terms, that you will never settle for less than you can be or share or give or create. It's not what we get that makes us happy, it's who we become. How we live our life, who we are as a person. People can take away all the things, but who you become, no one can take away. And the problem is most of us are trying to be something we're not. And it isn't so much about change, about changing yourself. The change happens when you be yourself. Know thyself, that's the hard part for most people, and then be thyself. Because most of us in our lives, out of our desire for respect or achievement or love or connection or something, we've been trying to be the way we think we'd have to be in order to get that love, respect, appreciation, whatever it is we've been after at some unconscious level. And we've been doing it so long that we think that this is who we are. Because success without fulfillment is failure. And I can't tell you how many people I work with who are supposedly the best in the world at what they do, and they have more money than they can spend, and they have all these people that love and respect them, and yet they're unhappy inside. Because if you want to know what's really you, where you're going to be alive is when it's really you. And you may even think you know who you are because you've been living a certain way, but I'll tell you how you'll know. You'll feel euphoric, you'll feel strong, you'll feel unlimited, you'll feel free. I have seen, and of three million people around this earth in 80 countries, I've seen just about anything you can see, and there are only so many patterns. And what you're going to find underneath all of this behavior is we have the same needs. There are six human needs we're going to review tonight. When you understand what those needs are and which ones you're focusing on, you start to understand why people do the crazy things they do, including you and I. And you begin to understand, hey, there might be a better way to meet my needs, and I don't have to get caught up in this game of stress and frustration and upset, or I could really help this person I care about, because I could see what's really going on. Part of what we want to accomplish here as leaders is we want to become practical psychologists. We want to understand what's really going on so we can help, so we can make a difference, so we can transform. So yes, of course you can do better in your business, because the more you understand about what people need and want, the greater you're going to be, the better manager, better leader, the better mom or dad the better friend, and there's a better you that's available when you understand what's driving you. But most of us are running patterns over and over again, and we want to free that up. To free it up, we've got to break the pattern. We've got to do things that are different. So we're going to do something different. I'm not here because I believe in positive thinking. If you think that's what I believe, you don't know much about me. I'm not one of those people that believes you're supposed to go to your garden and chant, there's no weeds, there's no weeds, there's no weeds, there's no weeds. <laughs> there's weeds right there. Right? That's what I believe. Here's what I believe. I believe that if you really want to be effective, you've got to tell the truth. In fact, there's three mandates of leadership, if you want to jot them down, that, are, that may be the foundation of everything that I believe and I hope that you will see as something that's useful for your own life to remember. Because it's so fundamental. So the first mandate to leadership is not just to be positive. The first mandate of leadership is see it as it is, but not worse than it is. The first secret to be an effective leader in your life, whether it's you want to lead your body from the location it is right now you're unhappy about, you don't have the energy you want, your body's not where it wants, to where you want to be, that's leadership. 
You want to transform your business, that's leadership. Your income, that's leadership. You want to help your children, that's leadership. You're going to be a leader? Step number one, tell the truth. See as it really is, but don't make it worse than it is so you have an excuse not to try. What takes guts is to put yourself on the line. What takes guts is to say, I'm going to make this work. What takes guts is to say, I'm going to believe, knowing I could be disappointed or devastated. But you know what? Disappointment's a good emotion if you learn how to use it. Anybody can see it as it is and maybe be honest, but here's the real secret. Can you come up with a vision? Step two is see it better than it is. That's part of what we're going to do this weekend. Seeing it as it is, you've got to be honest. And there's not anybody in this room, including me, doesn't have areas of their life that can be made better. But if we can figure out what they are and tell ourselves the truth, regardless of what other people think, then we've got a chance to make a change. I learned something from General Schwarzkopf, one of the best leaders I've ever met. And I got a chance to spend quite a bit of time with him over the years. And he said to me, Tony, I'll tell you the secret to leadership. He said, the whole secret to your life, for any group of any individual, is no individual, no organization can get better until they can admit something's wrong. And you see what the problem is? No one wants things to be wrong, so we compare ourselves to others who are doing better than so we can feel really good. See, he raised the standard. He went to step two. Step two is you've got to see it better than it is and set that as your standard. A standard is something you don't go for. It's not a goal. It's something you live, breathe, and find a way to get to no matter what. If there isn't a way, a leader makes the way. <laughs> is there a difference between should and must for you, yes or no? You better believe there is. So when, it gets the, when that standard is a must for you, you're going to find the way. Finally, the third key here is once you see it better than it is, make it that way. You got to take massive action. You got to be resourceful. You got to find the way to make it you want it. So this weekend, first thing we're going to do after a while is you're going to get real clear about how is it really? How is your relationship really? How is your body really? How is your career really? How are your finances really? All of us in this room, as different as we are, and you can look around, you see every gender, race, probably religion, belief structure in this room. The one thing I bet we have in common is we won't settle. How many came because you want more? How many came because you want more? Say I. Oh, say I. So whatever that more is that you came for, more energy, more focus, more determination, more confidence, more certainty, more love, more success, more playfulness, more of your body being where it is, more of your spirit alive, whatever it is, I can tell you this, whatever you think you came for, that's not why you came. Because I've done this for 25 years. I'm not saying you won't get that too. But what brought you here and what you're going to leave with is going to be more than what you thought. I can promise you. You want to know what makes us happy? progress. That's it. I don't care what you've achieved. If you don't feel like you're still growing, if you don't feel like you're still contributing, if you don't feel like there's some progress in your body or your mind or your relationship or your business, if you don't feel like there's progress, you're going to be unhappy. I don't care how big your life is compared to other people. Progress is the game, my friends. It's being alive. And if we're going to be alive, absolutely. <laughs> Whatever your game plan is, it's ultimately to get to a certain feeling. And the truth is you can have it right now. This next few days is the beginning of that path, and we want to take it to a whole nother level. And let's start now.